Hello everyone, I am Tanvi Kaur and I welcome you to this series called RBI 247. In this very series, we pick up some important financial topics and we try to discuss them with the help of different questions. So for all those who are coming to our channel for the very first time, you can subscribe to our channel and press this bell icon for all latest updates and notifications. You can also join our telegram group. In this very group, we share some free quizzes as well as the updates for all our latest videos. So moving on to question number one, which says the World Bank has approved $500 million support under raising and accelerating MSME program. What is its objective? So this uh, program has come up where World Bank has given some support to India in order to support its MSME sector. So we have to identify the objectives. So let's discuss a bit about this. World Bank has approved this program of $500 million which will help support our MSME, MSME sector in India. This is a step which has been taken. Now already our government, RBI, they have been taking different steps in order to support the MSME sector. Because of COVID, this sector has been hit a lot and there is a need to support it. So this program will support the government's initiative to uh, revitalize our MSME sector. So government is already working over here and when World Bank has given this support, so this additional amount of funding can help uh, to bring out MSME sector out of the problems which is it is facing due to COVID. So uh, this support has been provided under a program and the name of the program is Raising and Accelerating the MSME Performance Program. So what's the objective before going to that? This is not the first time that uh, the World Bank has intervened in the MSME sector in India. Already in the last year also World Bank provided some support. So at that time $750 million was the amount which was finalized and the program was named as MSME Emergency Response Program. So it was approved in July 2020 to help the MSME sector in India to provide it the liquidity to help provide the funding to meet the credit needs of different MSMEs which were severely impacted due to COVID. So the first impact, first intervention program was MSME Emergency Response Program and now another program has come up called RAM. Talking about the objectives, why uh, has World Bank provided this very support. So if I talk about MSME sector, it is the backbone of our economy. It is helping a lot, be it with respect to contributing to GDP, be it with respect to contributing to our exports. MSME sector has been doing really very good. But out of some of the MSMEs in India, around 40% don't have enough access to finance. So they are lacking when it comes to having enough finance to finance its, to fund its operations. So MSME sector has been hit, uh, hardly hit by COVID and it does need support. So this, MS, this World Bank's initiative is going to provide that support. Let's see how it will help. First of all, it will provide the funding so it increases the liquidity okay, for these small businesses which have been impacted due to COVID. Secondly, the target of this very program is to improve the performance of MSMEs. It, it is likely to improve the performance of around more than 5 lakh MSMEs. So this is the target that by providing the funding, it, it will help meet the credit needs of MSMEs and make sure that their production improves, their employment improves and overall performance improves. So RAM program will intensify the efforts and it will help support the firms so that they can return to their pre-crisis production and employment levels. Now because of COVID, these firms have been hit a lot. Their production levels have reduced. People are losing on the employment. So the aim of the program is to provide the liquidity, to provide the funding to these businesses, to MSMEs, so that they can at least return to their pre-crisis production and employment levels. Not only this, it will also uh, support the growth of these MSMEs and generate much more jobs in the MSME sector. Having supported the immediate liquidity and the credit needs of MSMEs, the RAM program will support India's government's efforts where we are trying to improve the productivity of MSMEs, where we are trying to finance them. Okay, uh, the private sector financing is what was lacking. So we are going to provide that funding, that support by a uh, world banks this very loan so the financial sector issues which msmes have been facing they can be tackled and all this will ensure the growth of our msme sector now talking about a bit about the world bank 
so this loan has been granted by an arm of world bank called the ibrd so 500 million loan will be provided by international bank for reconstruction and development which is an arm of world bank group so the maturity of this loan is 18 and a half years world bank jo hai wo panch alag alag groups ka ek body hai it's so basically a unique global partnership which comprises of five development institutions these are the institutions ibrd iba ifc mega and icsid so telling a telling about these in a very brief manner the international bank for reconstruction and development which provided this loan is uh, into fun- it provides the function it, it basically conducts functions like that of providing the loans credit facilities and other such grants so jo bhi loans ya credits dene hain wo world bank ka ye arm deta hai then there is another arm which is also into providing loans and it is called international development association so it provides the loans which are the low interest loans or no interest loans to those countries which stand low when it comes to their income level so low or no interest ke loan ye body deti hai low income countries ko then we have the international finance corporation so its function is to provide the advices to ensure the investments to help with the asset management for various companies and for the governments as well then we have mega which stands for multilateral guarantee agency so it provides the protection against the risks so it ensures the lenders the investors against the political risks such as war then we have icsid which is the international center for settlement of investment disputes so it is uh, as the name suggests it handles all the disputes which might come up between the investors and the countries this is how world bank operates all right now moving back to the question which of this is the objective of world banks this program obviously it targeted improving the performance of msmes it aims to support and make sure that they return ex- at least to their pre production pre crisis levels and then it will lay the foundation for growth so answer is option e all the statements correctly states the objectives moving on to question number 2 the dash uh, dash became the first nation in the world to deem bitcoin a legal tender the country allows the usage of bitcoin to pay taxes and obligate the businesses to accept it for payment so this is a major step which has been taken on part of a country called el salvador so the answer to this question is option e again uh, that is el salvador so what have they done el salvador if i talk about it it's a country in central america and it has become the first nation to approve bitcoin as a legal tender they have taken this decision that they will make bitcoin a legal tender and around in 90 days a law will also come up in place where el salvador will finally initiate bitcoin being a legal tender now uh, why how can bitcoin be used when it will become a legal tender in their country it can be used for different purposes one is it can be used to pay the taxes so taxes are bitcoin mein pay kar sakte ho you again other businesses will be obligated to accept bitcoin as a payment like we uh, take if it uh, if i talk about india we have a 10 rupee note we have a 100 rupee note and the businesses have to accept it as a means of payment similarly now in el salvador this uh, bitcoin will be mandatory to be accepted by businesses for payment so if a buyer wants to make payments through bitcoin businesses will have have to accept it so if you go to mcdonalds in el salvador and you say uh, please take this bitcoin for payment they can't refuse you once this bitcoin becomes a legal tender officially there so uh, you can also convert your bitcoin into other currencies and you won't be ta- taxed when it comes to capital gains tax as well over there then if i talk about el salvador it depends a lot on remittances so a lot of remittances come from different countries back to el salvador now when the people uh, when people uh, send back the money to el salvador what happens is during the conversion of those currencies a lot of money is taken by intermediaries so remittances ka jo exact amount hai the exact amount of remittance is not received and a lot of money gets deducted in the transaction costs and all other cost associated with conversion so when bitcoin will be accepted as a legal tender uh, that uh, remittance can easily be brought into their nation so use of bitcoin has its potential to help salvadors living abroad to send remittances back home so bitcoin ko aap tax pay karne ke liye cheeze kharidne ke liye aur remittance bhejne ke liye sab ke liye use kar sakte ho el salvador mein 
Now, why have they come up with this concept where uh, they are you making Bitcoin a legal tender? They believe that it will help promote financial inclusion. If I talk about El Salvador, they are not very good when it comes to uh, rendering the financial services. A lot of people over there are not uh, having, say, basic accounts or they are not accessing the basic financial services. So this step, usage of Bitcoin, a cryptocurrency will promote the financial inclusion over there. Moreover, till now they have been using dollars and now uh, uh, as a, a currency over there. But now they will be able to use Bitcoin as well and it might be expressed in some terms of dollar. So El Salvador is highly dependent as I told you on remittances and lot of money gets deducted when the conversions are done. So use of Bitcoin will save that very money and help receive back the remittances. Then it will bring, uh, El Salvador believes that uh, this very initiative will help bring more investments to their nation, more tour, it will promote more tourism, more innovation and overall economic development. Because it will ensure financial inclusion, more rendering of financial services, uh, more access to financial services, obviously they feel that it will give a boost to their economy as well. Now the use of Bitcoin will be optional for users. It's up to users whether they want to use it or not. Okay, its use will begin as a legal tender in 90 days. Uh, this is what they have decided as of now. So the answer to this question was option E, El Salvador. Moving on to next question. But before that, talking about the status of uh, cryptocurrency in India. So I told you in one of the sessions that RBI came up with a bill, bill where, uh, sorry, RBI came up with a notification where it told that uh, the previous circular cannot be cited for not rendering the crypt, uh, not helping up the crypto exchange platforms because that very notice was struck down. So does it mean that central bank is favoring the cryptos? The answer to this question is no. Central bank is still not very clear as to whether cryptos are a good option or not. In fact, it has concerns associated with it. So if I talk about our governor, after a week after that very notice, when our monetary policy committee decision came up, he, he said that all major concerns associated with cryptos still remain. And these concerns have also been highlighted to the government. So central bank is still not clear as to what should be done with respect to cryptos. The cryptocurrency bill is still pending. They are having a lot of discussions, deliberations, and they are sharing the concerns associated with these crypto with our government as well. Although banks can't cite old circular to be a reason of not dealing in cryptos, but are cryptos a perfect solution for our nation? That is still not clear or whether it will remain legal or not, it is still not clear. Okay, there are concerns with respect to cryptos when it comes to money laundering, when it comes to terrorism financing, when it comes to maintaining financial stability. So all these concerns have been discussed with the government as well and till now no final solution has come up. Moreover, uh, the RBI through its circular also told the banks to exercise due diligence on whatever deals it's making, making sure proper KYCs are there, making sure there is no money laundering kind of thing being carried out. So banks are being warned to carry out due diligence when they are dealing with cryptos. But RBI has not officially said that you can't deal in cryptos. Okay, this is the current status of India. Moving on to next question. Paytm Entertainment's balance sheet exceeded the maximum cap specified under RBI rules, making it eligible to be classified as an NBFC. It has approached RBI seeking an exemption from being categorized as a finance company. Which of the following options correctly states this RBI rule where a company needs to be registered with central bank as an NBFC? So let's just discuss a bit about it. The answer to this question is option D. If a company derives 50% of its total assets and income from financial assets, it will have to register as an NBFC with Central Bank. So let us see about a bit about it. So if I talk about Paytm, Paytm has a subsidiary called Paytm Entertainment, which basically deals with all the online ticket booking services like movie booking, movie tickets, event ticket booking for different events, amusement parks, etc. Okay, so that subsidiary is now facing a risk that it will be classified as an NBFC. And Paytm's entertainment, Paytm, Paytm's this unit doesn't want to be classified as an NBFC. 
so it has approached rbi and it is seeking that please grant us an exemption we don't want the nbfc tag so how come they uh, came up under this ambit of being an nbfc and why they want an exemption let us have a look at it so if i talk about rbi's rule rbi says that if there is any company whose 50% of the total asset and whose 50% of total income is derived from financial asset then that company will be an nbfc and for that they need to register with the central bank as an nbfc कोई भी कंपनी के अगर 50 परसेंट या उससे ज़्यादा टोटल असेट्स और टोटल इनकम फाइनेंशियल असेट्स से आ रही है तो उन्हें एन के एन uh, की तरह रजिस्टर करना पड़ेगा सेंट्रल बैंक के साथ सो हाउ कम पे टी एम एंटरटेनमेंट के मंडर इट्स एम बेट पे टी एम ड्यूरिंग दिस कोविड टाइम और वी कैन से पे टी एम नॉट ड्यूरिंग जस्ट नॉट जस्ट बिकॉज ऑफ कोविड ऑब्वियसली द फर्म्स आर फेसिंग प्रॉब्लम सो इन ऑर्डर टू हेल्प पे टी एम सपोर्टेड पे टी एम एंटरटेनमेंट सपोर्टेड वन ऑफ इट्स अदर काइंड ऑफ फर्म्स कॉल्ड पे टी एम फर्स्ट गेम्स इनका एक जॉइंट वेंचर है पे टी एम फर्स्ट गेम्स के साथ उनको सपोर्ट करने के लिए पे टी एम ने कुछ लोन प्रोवाइड किया पे टी एम एंटरटेनमेंट सैंक्शन वन टाइम लोन ऑफ एट्टी करोर्स टू पे टी एम फर्स्ट गेम्स ना आफ्टर इट गेव दिस वेरी लोन इट्स बैलेंस शीट एक्सीडेड फिफ्टी परसेंट कैप तब उसकी बैलेंस शीट में जो टोटल असेट्स या इनकम थे वो फिफ्टी परसेंट से एक्सीड कर गए नाउ बिकॉज ऑफ दिस लोन वेन दे पास दिस लिमिट दे आर नाउ अंडर दी एम्बेड टू बी क्लासीफाइड एज एन बी एफ सी सो दे विल हैव टू अप्लाई टू आर बी आई टू बिकम एन एन बी एफ सी बट दे डोंट वॉन्ट टू बिकम वाई वाई दे वॉन्ट एन एग्जामेशन बिकॉज इफ दे विल बिकम एन एन बी एफ सी दे विल बी रेगुलेटेड द वे द एन बी एफ सीज आर रेगुलेटेड ओके दे विल हैव टू अधियर टू अ लॉट ऑफ नॉर्म्स एंड रिक्वायरमेंट्स बी इट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू गेटिंग अ लाइसेंस फ्रॉम आर बी आई टू कंटिन्यू द ऑपरेशन बी इट मेंटेनिंग सर्टन कैपिटल रिक्वायरमेंट्स बी इट गेटिंग द आर बी आई नॉड इफ दे वॉन्ट टू रीस्ट्रक्चर बी इट कंप्लाइंग विद आर बी आई नॉर्म्स फाइलिंग द कंप्लाइंस रिपोर्ट विद आर बी आई एवरी सिक्स मंथ्स एंड अ लॉट मोर रेगुलेशन सो ये सब चीज़ें पे टी एम को फॉलो करनी पड़ेंगी अगर वो एक एन बी एफ सी टैग उसको मिल जाएगा दैट्स वाई दे डोंट वॉन्ट एन एन बी एफ सी टैग सो दे हैव अप्लाइड विद आर बी आई दैट प्लीज ग्रांट दिस एग्जामेशन आर इंटेंशन वॉज नॉट टू बिकम अ फाइनेंस कंपनी सो वी इट वॉज जस्ट अ वन टाइम थिंग दैट वी डू दैट वी डिड एंड दस दे डोंट इंटेंड टू मेक इट अ प्रैक्टिस फॉर देम सेल्फ सो दे आर रिक्वेस्टिंग आर बी आई टू नॉट गिव द एन बी एफ सी टैग so you should be clear about this very rbi's rule that when can a company be classified as an nbfc now if any such news you read in a newspaper or you go through them through our sessions what should be your first approach you should first think okay they are talking about nbfc so are we clear about the concept of nbfc aisa kuch padhte waqt aapko important terms dekh ke unke bare mein aur padhna chahiye taki ek news piece padhte padhte aapke कई टॉपिक्स क्लियर हो जाए सो फ्रॉम हेयर यू सॉ द वर्ड एन बी एफ सी सो यू शुड जस्ट गो टू दी आर बी आई वेबसाइट सर्च अबाउट एन बी एफ सीज यूल गेट अ लॉट ऑफ टॉपिक्स वॉट इज एन एन बी एफ सी वॉट आर डिफरेंट क्लासिफिकेशन और टाइप्स ऑफ एन बी एफ सी वॉट आर डिफरेंट फंक्शन ऑफ एन बी एफ सीज वॉट इज द लेटेस्ट रेगुलेशन विद और द फ्रेम वर्क एसोसिएटेड विद एन बी एफ सीज सो एक टॉपिक देख के आप उस आर बी आई की वेबसाइट पर जाके और फर्दर टॉपिक्स देख के उसके बारे में पढ़ सकते हो दिस वे यू कैन गेट प्रिपेयर फॉर योर एग्जाम्स एज वेल इफ यू आर एन एनरोल स्टूडेंट ऑब्वियसली यू विल बी गेटिंग दी यू वुड बी हैविंग एन एन बी एफ सी डॉक्यूमेंट एज अ पार्ट ऑफ योर कोर्स सो देर आई हैव मैंशन ऑल दीज थिंग्स बट योर अप्रोच शुड बी दैट वाई रीडिंग एनी पीस ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन यू शुड नॉट गैदर जस्ट वन इन्फॉर्मेशन विच इज बींग शेयर यू शुड रेफर अदर रिलेटेड आर्टिकल्स टू दैट वेरी टॉपिक एंड प्रिपेयर दैम एज वेल दिस वे योर पेस विल रिमेन गुड वेन इट कम्स टू योर एग्जाम प्रिपरेशन so this was all for today's session i hope you found this session to be useful with this i would like to end up this session thank you so much